Okay, so now we'll get on to our 7.30 meeting appointment. We're right on schedule. Someone's going to yell at me at my next meeting with them. <laughs> All right, so we have the building committee here. The whole building committee has come. No. Oh, one's almost. missing. Almost. Oh, yes. So, Mr. Tudrin, what do you wish to talk about? Well, I've got an agenda for you here, and given your time frame today, I'll let you kind of pick the items you want to you want to cover tonight, well, uh, or I can like go through them all what quickly. What would you like to cover tonight? That's the important it's your, it's your thing. Meeting, Joyce. No, no, no. <laughs> You've just taken it over. We'll do whatever you want. <laughs> this one we received already, right, Tim? Uh, it's updated. Is it different? Yes. Okay. It's updated from when? Uh, from 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's just minor changes. All right. All right. Okay. So I thought we'd start by just giving you a quick update on some of the critical needs projects that mm -hmm. we've been pursuing since the fall town meeting acceptance of the uh, requests. And I'm going to ask him to kind of give you a brief summary. He's got the table in front of you so you can kind of follow along. Yep. So uh, I. I direct you to the comments. What well, that's what I actually uh, modified this afternoon, so it could read better for you. What I wanted to do was give you a total update of each specific um, project and where it stands. So, mo so most of them, all the smaller ones, we've gone out to bid. We've got some good heart. Uh, numbers and we have chosen for some of the smaller ones people to do these projects now uh, a lot of them are going to start later on when the weather gets better but there are some larger items that uh, we do have the biggest one there's some large ones in town which is the metal roofs the specs have been done uh, completed we've given them to uh, Mr. Nixon, he's, he's formulating that and hopefully we'll be able to get that out and get some uh, good quotes back. That's a large project, so it's gonna go through DCAM process, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the other large one that we have for budget is the asbestos flooring as you signed the um, contract a while ago. Uh, what we are pushing for, and we need to get to you as soon as possible, again, a hard number of how much this is going to cost us. And we hope we can get that very shortly for you, okay? As soon as we get that, and we have reiterated to the uh, professional group that we need that sooner than later to present to town meeting because that is one of the Warner articles we'd like to bring forward if we do go over. Okay, until, the, until that is gone through, we will not know if, if the $100,000 we have set aside to do it for will be enough. We want to make sure that we have that. We'll go through all the uh, articles of the last part of the agenda. Mm -hmm. The the flat roof at the senior center. Uh, I understand the contract has been sent back to the consultant or to the. Uh, the so the bid has been contractor. Bid has been awarded. The contract was sent to the contractor, who signed it, provided all the bonds. That's been returned to us. I've forwarded it on to legal for his signature, and it's due to be back at the select board's table this time next week. Okay. Okay. A lot of incidental projects on here, but I think, uh, as Tim said, there's gonna, we're going to be waiting a little bit until the weather clears to start. <coughs> In the meantime, uh, Gary Berg is uh, pursuing contractors, making calls, uh, meeting with with people to to get bids, and, and it's been it's been a tedious uh, effort on his part. And uh, as you can imagine, with the snow removal responsibilities he's had, it hasn't gone as quickly as we'd like. Um, I know that we're kind of overdue for a conversation about Gary's time relative to some of these efforts and how that dovetails with his responsibilities at the DPW. Um, we all recognize snow removal is, is uh, priority one, but uh, I, I think even beyond the spring, we're gonna have 
trouble keeping up with this many projects. So, yep. Um, just keep we, that in mind. I know we can't solve it tonight, but uh, it is a it is a. We're going to stay on top of these yeah. as much as possible. Uh, all in all, unfortunately, we missed a lot of our meetings too because of snow, so we couldn't get this information in a timely manner to you. But all in all, they're in pretty good shape. We got some really good quotes. Quite honestly, there's only one, and that's under the DPW, the exterior window replacements. Uh, the bid is we can't do all the windows because they came out to be more than we thought. But other than that, everything seems to be coming in at the prices we, we estimated and we, we uh, obtained up front. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in pretty good shape to get a lot of these smaller projects ongoing very quickly. And a lot of them are going to start this month and through April. Can I just ask, um, you know, just going back to Gary, Gary Berg, you said a lot of them are going to start. I thought part of what uh, the concern was is kind of the oversight, the day-to-day -day oversight. So I could appreciate, you know, if Gary's having to deal with the snow removal again, that's, you know, act of God, but he can, <laughs> can't control that. But I would think that it becomes much more of an issue as soon as these things actually get off the ground. You guys agree? Yes. Yeah, so shouldn't, shouldn't we, I mean, my concern is that we're gonna get these projects off the ground. We don't have resources allocated definitively, but based on the, the email exchange I had with you, it sounds like this is Gary's third priority, not even the second by agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and if these projects start off and nobody's minding the company store, so to speak, or it's being done on a part-time basis, we could wind up with a pretty big mess on our hands quickly. So yes. I was just wondering what we need to do something about that, I would think. We do, but we actually have some time because most of this work isn't starting until the weather clears. So we probably have about a month mm -hmm. for us to sit down and talk about it more, more thoroughly and move along with that. Okay. So um, can we make that an agenda item soon? The, yes, I think we have it farther down this month. Okay. The other thing I think about is we do we kind of be having some changes in the DPW coming along at that around this time. So the question is, how do we, how is that going to figure in this as well? We'll have the changes in the DPW. We'll also have the consultant for on-call services coming on as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that can play into it. As, as we we so want I think to we have use a little, the consultant for the largest projects, but yeah. I can promise you, we're not going to go forward with any of these projects so we feel comfortable that we do have that oversight. Yes. Some of them, we have some good contractors that we feel comfortable with, and that makes for a better right. project. Mm -hmm. But we will not go forward with anything if we get too buried with some of this stuff, which we hope we won't be. But mm -hmm. no, we will not go forward with any of them. We can tell them to okay. start these And projects. I think as we've learned in past projects that we've done in town, or at least that I've been involved with, that um, no matter how comfortable you feel with your contractor, you still need to have, you have, to have a different pair of eyes yep. watching. Right. A lot of these are permitted items. Mm -hmm. So the inspectors will be overseeing it. We will waive the fees, but they're all permitted mm -hmm. requirements, but even the doors. So we will be watching them. <coughs> As permitted items, though, you're inspecting the work not directing the work so that brings up another issue we need to figure out mm -hmm. how do we separate you guys and protect you from the issue of you That's being the inspector right mm -hmm. and then someone directing not, the work yeah. Yeah. yeah we will be we have several alternate inspectors that we will be handling yeah so that's something else we have to figure out as well mm -hmm. and it's quite complicated it is um before you move on, sure. we talked a little bit, you know, this is kind of a neat little chart we have here. Right. And um, if we actually, maybe we don't need all this information, but we <coughs> showed up this chart and posted it online so people in the community could actually go on the town website if they're interested and they could see which where the projects are that we've already funded. Yeah. So you should send it to us sure. electronically. Yep, I can do that. Yeah. And, Thanks then, morning. and then that would be something we could put on the web and people can see. And yep. so I imagine people are now wondering what, they voted for the last time is getting done. Yes. yes. Right. That's our goal as well. All right. Um, I'm going to wait for questions until we go through everything, if you don't mind. So, uh, just to touch briefly upon maintenance budgets, um, Gary Bird came to us about a month ago and indicated that he needed to present a maintenance budget for the
the buildings promptly. Um, it didn't give us enough time to think very hard about what we really needed for these buildings. And the reason you formed us in the first place is because many of the maintenance items have been deferred for so long. So we thought it prudent to start a conversation about what really needs to be done in each of the buildings. Uh, we haven't gotten very far because we've had some snow delays, as Tim indicated, but um, we're hoping to put that together and recognizing that the budgets are uh, with the library and with the fire department and with DPW. They're, they're all over the place, as you right. know. Um, you know, integrating those into some form of single maintenance budget, I think, would be our ultimate goal, but that'd be something we need to work with finance and with you all to, uh, to, to determine. But we really want to give you an <coughs> honest number as to how much you should be spending on the buildings every year to maintain them properly. So, so that's a goal for us this year to do that. Okay. We've actually talked about that a couple of times, and we've never taken action on it. So, what yeah, pulling it all pulling, right, pulling it together? You, you remember how many conversations we've had? So, I think maybe we need to. I think there might make a like savings with the next, you know, because that's going to involve a change in the chart of accounts, too. So, yeah, but I don't think it's actually going to actually happen for the next budget, actually. Starting for the next fiscal year in July 1. Why not? We have to be done by when? No, I'm talking oh, about she's talking making a decision that right. putting a stake in the ground and saying effective July 1, 2015, right. those line items, I mean, we will have them populated, so to speak, but that we actually make a, a physical change in the chart of accounts. Oh, moving them into a... To move them. Yeah, so that we're set up for yeah. the next. Yes, I think we're that's very easy. Because otherwise, we're just chasing our tails. And we're going to have the same conversation next year, and we'll all go, "Yep, should have done that." Yeah, yeah, but we won't have the actual numbers. We should probably have that in. Underst you know? Understood. That the along that line, thing. you can start to look at putting some of your contracts together. You know, whether it's alarm uh, notification monitoring or elevator maintenance mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, if those are separate contracts mm -hmm. from different departments, they could be put together and bundled, right? So. Anyway, we'll move on with some other things. The uh, consultant selection. Uh, Mr. Nixon has advertised the consultant selection, a request for uh, qualifications, and it's due back, David. The I believe it's due back the, uh, the 18th of this month. And we've had, uh, Richard, I. 32 requests. 32 requests. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. A bit. Mm -hmm. So we've got to. Uh, quickly put together a selection panel um, as uh, through the uh, process Massachusetts has you uh, select for the approving uh, body um, and can delegate or appoint a, a selection panel. Um, we are recommending that we put together a sort of a sub panel, not the entire municipal buildings committee, perhaps maybe uh, you know three of us uh, uh, a select board representative and some other objective party, something like that. I'm just yep. throwing that out there as a, mm -hmm. as a basis. Mm -hmm. um, I can assemble the documents for the selection ranking criteria, the interview process, and put together a timeline for the, the dates. But um, it's kind of in your hands to delegate that to some, such a panel. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So we'll do it tonight. Go do it right it. now. Make a motion, Joyce. <laughs> so we're going to have one member. Committee. Subcommittee. Yep. Subcommittee. The Missile Building Committee with mm -hmm. one select board member and one resident. Mm -hmm. And three members from the. And the purpose of this committee is to review the qualification statements that to come pick, in. To pick a consultant. After. Bring so their, so bring their their time frame is after March 18th. And right. So and do, do the same like ranking, one, two, three, and bring us three. Mm -hmm. Three to five. How do you want to do it? Out of thirty-two. Of the members of the selection. Yeah. Oh no. The, so so the, so the committee, which you are now delegating, mm -hmm. would be the ones that would take the thirty some odd proposals and shortlist them, and then interview those those persons, and then come, come to you top. with a recommendation for the number one mm -hmm. selection. Yes. And two and three, but yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, I have the wrong date. I told you the eighteenth. It's actually the sixteenth. Okay, so that's the motion. There's a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we need to. All those who want to be the citizen volunteer. I won't be here otherwise. I'd gladly do it. The citizen 
volunteer. Oh, <laughs> we need to put that on TV5. You might have a lot of people that want that, that gig. You might want to be the select board volunteer. Is this something that John can do? Actually, yeah, he John could do this. Because, I mean, There's he no has to be recused so yes. often. Right. Maybe we should have him nominate John for this. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. All those in favor? No. <laughs> Just tell him right now. I think he's in bed. It's you, John. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk to John about Yeah, let's TV. talk to him. Okay. All right. And we'll, and we'll put on TV5 and put the word out that we're looking for anybody, any H resident. Pat. H Pat. Yeah. Page page. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Anybody that's interested, please contact us so we can fill that and resident be, at large. The selectman that will choose that one resident? Yes. Okay. If you have anybody you have in mind, send them forth. No. Okay. Or neutral one. Neutral. Well, I don't know if anybody's mentioned it to you. Not yet. No, it's not come up. <laughs> it will soon. And then you can choose what three members you want. Yes, we will. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, Go continue. ahead. Okay, so uh, update on the North Hadley Village Hall sale. Um, you've seen the site plan, right? You've seen uh, some plans I've floated out there about the possibility of dividing some of that property for public use to be maintained by the town or not. Um, and we've talked a little bit about the ranking criteria. Uh, the process would be such that requests for proposals would go out, okay? And, and part of the selection of the winning proposal would be the price, importantly, right? But also it would be, uh, uh, if you will, a best use, uh, recommended use for that property. Um, so our thoughts are that we would probably have some kind of village meeting to talk to abutters and residents of the of village of North Hadley to see what their thoughts were on, on what would be the best use. And I mean, we're leaning towards recommending something that has some public asset to it. Either it's a public space or a restaurant or somewhere where the public could, could go into would be a higher ranking than a single family residence or a multifamily residence. Um, so there's some selection criteria, that's, that's two of them. Um, adherence to this to the historic preservation restrictions. So there might be an option where we uh, set mandatory pre preservation restrictions, and then we set some optional ones. And if the proposer were to accept the optional ones, that would be a higher ranking criteria than not accepting them. Right. I don't no think I. Looking at the setup of where businesses have been in North Hadley, mm. it doesn't seem to me that that side of the street is business. Uh, zoned. So I don't know how you would be well, able they to don't zone it. Just, it zone. It they don't zone just both one sides. side of the street. Both yeah. sides get zoned. Both, yeah. Yeah. Both sides are zoned. Not necessarily. What's it zoned yes. for? Right. So limited. Well, I don't last the planning board. It's limited right. business. <laughs> right. so. Limited. So it's limited business already. It's mm. yeah. not one side of the street. It's both sides. It's, it's both sides. Right. So. And the final ranking criteria, and I'll, send, I'll pass this out to you, if you will, um, is, is simply how much of, of the land, if any, would, would the proposer be willing to uh, leave for town use, yes. whether that's an easement or a, a portion of the property. So we would probably set two or three concept site plans, and if he accepts one, which is the full property, or two, which is the full property minus a small section, each of those would be a ranking. Yeah. Are we setting ourselves up for failure here to not be able to sell this building? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, I don't know. It Why? certainly seems like it to me. Why would you say that? Because well, when you put so many restrictions on things, who's going to want to buy it? I, I think we're killing ourselves here. We you might know, get I, we you can always change. You can always I mean, go back. You, you, you go, go through an uranium, and then depending on what you have, you still only have one that says. Right. You know what? It's, we're it's going to get the same amount of proposals, Joyce. We might just get really bad ones, and then you right. just choose. But the, we'll still get the same amount. Yeah. You can choose the best the of the best. Okay. Other towns fear. have not had had great success with this no, they have endeavor, not. so. <laughs> I think Hatfield has a better building and they can't get rid of it and it's in a much better shape than 
what that building is. You know, I could see a thousand uses for that building yeah. over in Hatfield, and they can't unload it. So I mean, I don't know. That's my only fear that yeah. we're going to be stuck with this. Montrose yeah, well, we might. There. We you until we try, we won't. Right, you yes, don't so. know that. Okay. The last criteria that I left on there was was the the willingness for the proposer to uh, accommodate the fire substation for certain durations. You know, knowing that we're not going to be able to move North Abbey Fire immediately. You know, if they can stay for an indefinite amount of time, that's very very highly ranked, but that's probably not realistic. Others might say six months or three months. So. That, yeah. You know, so I, I put together this just for you to look at and review. Yeah. And and the ranking criteria is just my own personal input. It doesn't have anyone else's yet. And okay. We haven't discussed it as a committee, but that's the I'm the I'm the subcommittee for the North Abbey <laughs> Sale. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's it for the. So the, uh, before fire. you leave the fire, before you leave yeah. North Abbey Hall, so the historic commission is working, and you have hired a consultant to or engage the person to help them with the historic preservation restrictions. So that part is moving forward. And that actually may be the slowest part of this mm -hmm. because the state has to approve right. restrictions mm -hmm. and for them, in order for them to be enforced. But that is moving forward. I've talked to the chair a couple of times and they are doing that. So that part is moving along as well. So for those of you who think North Hadley Hall is just sitting there for Zumba classes, that's not really what's happening. It's moving along. Mine is being used. Sure. Right. Um, two, two more things. Um, I hope to do the public village presentation towards the end of March, just for a time frame. Uh, but what we don't have and we did ask for um, was uh, your approval to get a real estate assessment done on that property by a real estate agent. There was, there was some requests for money. I think that it was it was got something on that. There's two real estate professionals that work in this valley. One's in Northampton and one's in Westfield, I believe, or West something. Uh, they generally run a thousand dollars. That's what we're looking. At. What would the appraisal do? Um, we know that we need to do a title search. And we know what the assessed value of the, of the property is. <coughs> what they generally would do would be to evaluate the, the condition of the building with res and its um, square footage and possible use. Again, based on after all the studies that we've done, we were going to hire gives, another one? It gives you a value. No, it gives you a value based on those parameters. It's just like any commercial property or anything. The bank needs that. Yeah, but isn't isn't any potential any potential buyer going to do that? So yeah, the commercial side you typically. How about our MIA insurance down the buildings? Do we have anything from them that would constitute the value of that building? We have a statement of values from them, but uh, we can't use that legally in a bidding situation. Yeah. You can only use, to, for determining value, you can only use the assessed value or an appraisal. So have you gotten a hard price from, F I assume you're using FSI from Northampton, or? Yes. And I, then who's I don't recall what the name was. It was so long ago that we looked them up. And you have their prices? Yes. Okay. Is one of the options to look at the value of the whole property, land and building, and then look at the building and look at the land? <coughs> it can be. I don't think that we've scoped it out by yeah. me measure right now. Okay. Um, so it would be $1,000 we'd have to get from somewhere. Do we want to do that? or Do we think it's going to be higher than the assessed value of the building? No. Then why do it? If one of the two requirements is we either use the assessed value to sell is that, the, when you use assessed value, aren't you setting that as the the minimum price? You you have to declare a value in the in the bid documents. You can sell the building for less than the declared value, but then you have to publicize in the central register the reasons why you accepted a price lower than what that value was. So you 
you do have that. Option. That's self-explanatory. That part. Is. I think we could all fill that. <laughs> oh please. Look. Well, I mean, I'm Joyce can do it. So let Joyce do it. So what? If I'm hearing it right, David, what this comes down to is, is we need either the real estate appraisal or the assessed value to legally make this sale move forward. Okay, mm -hmm. correct? In, in, through the bid process. Through the bid process. Okay, right. so the number necessarily does not change the process. Correct. Okay, so why do we go through the exercise of paying somebody $1,000 to give us a real estate appraisal when we can just use the assessed value of the building and move forward on the project? Because you know what the assessed value of that building is? Off, off the top of my head, no. Over $400,000. Yes. I already had two people that are interested in that piece of property, and when I told them what the set value was, they laughed. They said, I wouldn't give you half of that. Well, that's, well, well see, that's, that's, that's the okay. crux of the argument. We don't. Yeah. We that's don't. We want to get the, the real estate agent to come over and tell us what they think that building might be. Might be able to get for that building. The land it's sitting on is. Yeah, yeah, but you're missing the point. Hold we on. don't need to do that to go through the bid process, correct, David? Right. I, I guess the, the it's a fiduciary uh, question here is that we have to be looking out for the best return on our investment right. for the taxpayer. If we think that the assessed value is too low and an appraised value will give us a higher price, right. we can ask That's for right. the market then. We should do the assessed, uh, the assessment, appraisal. the appraisal. If, if, however, we think the appraised value is going to be less than, then we need to justify to the taxpayers why we're willing to go with a lower number. So either way, we should it's probably do it. Because it's a dump. Go ahead. Well, oh, speaking of the taxpayer, I agree with this committee. As a taxpayer, independent appraisal of it, not second guess from the administrator, from the select board, or anyone else. They take a true assessment of the building and if the building and the land. And then I would be satisfied as a taxpayer. But if it's mixed matched and everybody's second guessing, I would not be satisfied at all as a taxpayer. Yep. My benefit I think from this is is if you can do it and get the value of the building the value of the lot and the together so there's really three values you're getting there and then you have a better scope of what's there and then if someone gives you a price and you really don't want to give up that lot because the, the overall price is is so low you would just keep that um, uh, see that's my take on it i don't know if that's i mean i'm not opposed to it but i'm just saying it is a thousand dollars but the building itself without the lot is not worth probably what it should be because there's no parking in front of that building so why would they want just the building without any parking well for someone who's putting apartments in it that you can you take the fire bays and they become the garage and you have enough parking for the building you can have apartments in the right so i think for the reasons no stated we should it. we should actually go I mean, I can just see, depending on what plays out down the road, right. the, the second guessing, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm comfortable just, with that. Yeah. I have so no then, problem spending $1,000. So where's it going to come from, though? So then we need to make a request, probably, to take it from the little pile that keeps getting shorter. That's right. Me. So we'll have to do that. Yes. So we'll make a request to the finance committee to use. Look to your budget, North Hadley Hall. Yeah. What, $1,200? Oh, no, that's for the... Sure, no. They've spent less than half of it, of the, uh, what's been allocated for the year, spent it, look at that budget first. Yeah, let's, let's, let's see how the oil bills for yeah. the... There's, there's a couple of windows that are so open that have to be Shut. prepared, so... Uh, there's, so, we'll just think. Yeah. Are yeah. they yeah. open or are they broken? Yeah. They're broken. They're broken. They're broken. So, we're putting plexiglass on the exterior, just try to keep some heat in there. Slapping a plexiglass pan on the cover hill. So, when was the last time we put some to insulation to in with the so I, I <laughs> It's not that hard. <laughs> so, go ahead and ask them for an updated quote and then bring it back to us. Right? Okay. 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 So, good. Uh, moving on to uh, the RFQ for the land purchase. Um, we talked a little bit about this um, 
there's been a limited amount of selection criteria in terms of uh, land uh, criteria for a potential new property based on the non-binding vote from the fall, right? So we put together, I think, a minimum acreage size mm -hmm. and a minimum location within a half a mile, I believe, from yeah, the village the center. Yeah. There was only two or three criteria total, which we gave to Mr. Nixon uh, to um, advance. And, and we've had some discussions with that, and I think that you as a board may be concerned that we don't have all the backup information, ultimately how much a new fire substation would cost um, the full build, not, not to mention the life cycle cost analysis as well. So I've started to put some numbers together for that. Um, I'm not sure I'm prepared to show you yet, but um, you know, I think that we're, we're, we're putting something together that includes everything, including the land costs, all the engineering, architectural costs, inspections, everything. And we put together a simple floor plan based on, and have, have given it to the chief several times to tweet. It's just a concept drawing of what he's looking for. That would give us an idea of how much the cost could be. So we'll try to get that. Right. It doesn't, in essence, change the selection criteria for, well, the, the criteria that we would need for a new property, but I guess it tells you whether or not you want to go down this road at all. Um, and that's something, you know, we ultimately will need guidance from the select board. But the town did vote, and the non money vote for us to pursue land. Um, it's just a matter of whether you want to go this way now or you want to get some more information from us and from potentially from this uh, consultant that we hire to help us with the estimate. Personally, I think we need a little more information. Yes. Um, one, uh, this is actually not even on the agenda, but the building committee has been looking at all the buildings and have been coming up with a rating for all the buildings. Um, we haven't finished it yet, but it's going to talk about some different things we haven't even discussed yet. Um, which may put a different light in how we look at a North Station. Um, so that that's something to look at. I know the fire department has talked to us about response times, but we haven't really looked at other options. Are there other options? If our main station is our main station, is there a different way to set ourselves up at the main station that would make response times just as fast? Is there a way that would so I think there's more information needs that come before I, I am ready. My other four members can vote me down. But I think there's a little more information before I, I'm ready to say this is the way to go. Yes, we've had a station up there, um, but is that, the, is that truly what we need to do or we need to change how we're doing all our business? And when I talk about all our business, I mean it's with the fire too. I mean, Yeah, not just for today. Where's the where's it going to be 10 years from now? Where's it going to be 20 years from now? Because before we do an endeavor like this, we can't worry about today and tomorrow. It's 10 and 20, 25 years from now. Is 25 years from now that going to work for the town of Hadley? It might not. And if it doesn't, then then you don't go through the huge capital costs of doing a project like that. But to be clear, we're not asking you to buy any land. Right. right. Uh, we know that. So we. And, and it's hard for me to give you an estimate on the cost of this endeavor until I know what the land is going to cost. And right. We understand that. You know, so, again, we have a placeholder, what we think we could get for well, minimum three acres, right, I think is what mm -hmm. we had. Um, so we can use that for now, but until we get some real numbers, it's just kind of a, an estimate. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think in fairness to the, the building committee, um, I agree with you that we need more information. But So I think maybe the action item for us right now is to be clear on what information we're looking for, ask the individuals involved in providing it, and put it on the calendar. So, yes. we, you know, and then we also so it gets done a little bit more expeditiously so you guys can keep moving. And I think we, we're going to have to tap into the consultant to help us with this. I think that's something we should just, it's going to get down to those type of weeds. Just let the consultant take the information they have and organize it, and then go. And we are going to have to go back to the fire chief and talk to him about what, what is what is the, where are the other options? Because we do need life cycle costs. If they come up with a, a plan for a building, what is the life cycle cost for this building? Right. That's something we definitely need to add on. And it'd be easier just to have the consultant make that part of what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do need to think about that more. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, the last item includes this uh, simple discussion of the warrant articles that we have. Some are placeholders for now, and some of them um, may really, uh, you know, be honest, honest ones that we will need. Um, number one, um, I think I mentioned this a while back that we are still lacking surveys of much of our properties that we're discussing, in particular the DPW um, uh, site, but but others as well. So. Um, we're obtaining at least one hard number on the estimates uh, or an estimate for those surveys yeah. and we'd like to propose an award article to, to cover those costs. Mm -hmm. um, Tim touched upon number two, the asbestos project additional funding. Um, we don't know if we need more money yet, so. Um, Can you put two and five together? Aren't they the same? Um, they, they, they may be, yes. Okay. Yeah. Depending on yes. what comes out where? Yeah, I mean, we're not seeing some overruns really in any of the other items. Right. Not, not that I'm aware of. Um, so we may not need that one at all. Right. But um, just the idea okay. would be that Fine. we may separate the asbestos from the other ones or we can combine them. If you yep. Uh, so as you know, we have Cardinal <laughs> looking at that and hope, hoping to get an honest estimate on the cost, which include the abatement, the there monitoring. Right. The moving expenses and the replacement of a new product, probably vinyl composition tile or something, to replace this in kind. And and I think, in retrospect, maybe we should have had some contingencies on, on the fall number. You know, we thought we had a, a, a good number. I still think it's pretty close, but um, you know, we should know better. And, and I, I know this consultant will give us a, a, a better um, look at it. Yeah, but to. To touch base there, you guys, that article that we passed in the fall was, we we said that this is our best estimate of what it costs. There's still money in the capital budget. The capital budget's not zero. So if and when we go through the process, if there is a cost overrun, we can come back to the town and say, look, we need to take another, you know, X amount of dollars out of the capital account to finish this project. I mean, uh, we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars here. Right. So, so we'll get back to you as soon as yes. we do hear about that. Um, the funding, uh, the relocation <coughs> park and rec in North Hadley Fire Station, should we actually sell the building this year? We have two departments which will need to be relocated. Um, Kathy at Park and Rec is looking at some options for lease space around. Hadley, that's one option. Um, we picked around the idea of putting some services in the senior center on the second floor. There'd be some renovation costs involved there. Um, so we have a placeholder now. We haven't really identified what the cost would be. Mm -hmm. And of course, North Hadley Fire, you know, we don't know what, what, what will happen there, but um, Mike may have some insight about that and we'll talk with him as well. So what we've asked of him is to look at the East Street see what could possibly go out of there. We could store someplace. Could we, you know, we're just playing around with all different alternatives and there could be a price on renting something. We just try and take, cover all of our bases on it, right? Yep. I noticed the chief's budget included oil for North Hadley fire substation for the year. And I mean, maybe there's some numbers there, who knows, but, um, but I think you'll want to cover the moving expenses for those two departments under an article. So that's why it's in here. Mm -hmm. um, this may be a little bit premature. Uh, following our discussion, placeholder for funding the, per uh, the purchase of a parcel based on their request for proposals for a new parcel for the North County Fire Substation. Mm -hmm. If we're not, in fact, issuing that RP right now, maybe you want to scratch it. And, and Put it on the fall. The fall. Okay. Well, I mean, once it's known, you can move it mm -hmm. as you need. And the last one was simply project overrun costs, which we can't identify it, but we wanted to get something on there in case we needed yeah. to yep. use it an article for that. Good right now, but we never know. Right. Okay. Any questions right. about the articles? Thank you for the update. You guys are working hard. Any questions from the board? Thank you very much. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can we just go? Oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, I get yeah. a question. Uh, yeah, one more. Uh, Dave Red 
the master plan of the sewer department? Any one of them in that department? I started it. I okay. didn't finish it. Put you to sleep. Well, starting better than nothing. But it puts you to sleep. I got a question here on the, the enclosed pole, uh, pole uh, barn. If, in fact, that sewer department, which most likely has to be improved in, within the next 10 years, the Fort River lies right over the hill and within the 200 foot setback of the river. If they enclose that building and have to turn around and either move it or remove it, then that money is a total waste. And I don't think there's any consideration of that. And I certainly, something's going to be done in that sewer, and it has to be. You know that Guilford is as well as anybody in the DPW business. Yeah, nitrogen is going to be an issue for everybody. So actually, we'll, we'll just have you guys look at that in a little more detail and see what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think your question, um, John, is, you know, gets to the root that we're, we're a building committee. And, you know, we, we're trying to take um, observations uh, from each of the department managers. We've asked everybody to come to speak with us about their, their particular needs for each building, what they think they're lacking, you know, what they foresee. And, and I, you know, I don't think we're in a position to tell you that water departments or the sewers not going to, it, it's going to grow. I mean, that's not really a building uh, qualification that any of us have. So we can go by what the report says or what you think or, or what the sewer department thinks. But um, it, it's, it, sounds, it sounds like it's telling you that there's not enough room for DPW there, if, if I read it uh, on, yeah. on the surface. So, but, but again, we're not, we're not qualified to talk about water and sewer, so we can only go by what's told to us. All right. and, and there wasn't a lot of representation from DPW in our meetings regarding their needs. So, you know, that was an issue as well. Well, there, we'll put that on the agenda for the change that's coming soon. Right. right. So you had one more thing? No, just the... Oh. <laughs> sorry, yes. One of my other duties besides being on the committee is also liaison with the library's design and planning planning and design committee. So just so that you know that uh, that board is still moving forward and we are at this point, um, we have a uh, library plan and we have an idea how, how large the library should be. And we are at this point, we'll be moving towards possibly looking at um, some preliminary ideas, um, hiring an architect to do that. And but that's, it's gonna be a couple months probably before we get around to that. And I'm in the process of uh, writing an RFQ for an OPM um, so that we can have somebody to help guide us through this process. And then... Um, are they planning on, in what I had read in some of their minutes, are they planning on looking at building a new building? We are looking at several options. Um, we're looking at the current building, we're looking at the school, and then possibly expanding towards the senior center, and if nothing else works, it would be a brand new building. So part of what we're trying to do is do a preliminary um, study of this, just to see what our options really are, whether or not we can even convert Russell School. If it's not on the table, then that building's out. If our current building is not possible, that would eliminate that. So right now we don't really know what direction we're going, we just know what our needs are. So part of the funding for this is coming from the library, Mass Library Board. Yeah. MLP, is that what yeah. they call themselves? Mm -hmm. So are they as particular as the school board and, and the process that it has to go yes. through? So they, they have the same, so they, you're gonna have to go through the same regimented thing where you're gonna have to. That's part of the reason for the OPM because that's gonna be required. Mm -hmm. But have you, if you get the OPM, you have to actually go to them and start the process and so. Well, there's certain criteria that have to be met before we even get to a design building, so we're working on filling out those uh, requirements and yeah, but you, X number of months into a two-year yeah. process. Yes, but the I mean, I just got recently thrown into a school building committee and, <laughs> and, and it amazes me what they make school people go through um, and the cost they're making them pay for something that they, 
but anyhow, I'm just a public works guy. Uh, so they all understand that, and we're not, they're working towards it, and they're working with the Mass Library Board to make yes. sure they follow yeah, all those little wickets. Yeah. And when the library comes in for their budget presentation, I think next week? We can talk to them. Um, yeah, bit. Patrick is actually going to be here along with Allison. Just just give a very brief update okay. as well, but mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that the building, municipal building committee also. But, you know, it is a, it's a two-year process to get to the point where we have the design. Um, and then it's really going to be up to the town whether or not they want to do that, fund it. Mm -hmm. And also what grant money will be available, but even at that said, we'll have a design and we may not get the grant money right away. Could be another round, it could be another year, it could be however it's going to, you know, whatever it's going to take. So this is just to get get our foot in the door, we'll be ready, poised and ready to go, and see what happens. Right. And as you can imagine, they're looking at us to tell them what our recommendations are towards Russell School and the Senior Center, but those are some of the options that yep. they're considering. So they're working closely with us, and David is a committee member for both. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that we realize is um, the current uh, library location is very limited, so to expand it in any direction, there's not a whole lot of room. So we will look to a designer to come up with some ideas and look at things that we're not thinking about and see if it's even feasible. Okay. So. Any other questions? No. Point of information, back when that land where the DPW sits, it was bought for the sole purpose of the sewer, not DPW. The select board changed that and added that place in there, which really never belonged there. Because there was never enough room for the future to to fill for the DPW's needs of this community. The land was just way too small to start with. Mm -hmm. And now they just kind of made a mess of things there. You know, so okay. that's part of history. All right. So again, thank you very much. You're doing a, a lot of work, and we appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.